Hello, here what we have is a phosphorescent screen containing zinc sulfide doped with copper. Uh, in most glow-in-the-dark items, you know that you have to activate them with, with light and get them to glow. I want to show you this. I have a red laser and I'm pointing at this screen and you can see that even though I'm shining light at the screen, it's not actually lighting up. However, if I move to higher energy light, say uh, blue or violet light, you can see that it has enough energy to get the screen to glow. But even so, this screen will fade out. The glow will fade fairly quickly. And if we were to plot uh, light intensity as a function of time, we can know that that would drop off pretty quickly. Now, for applications like devices and stuff like that, it would be desirable to have a light uh, that lasts longer. And so, about a hundred or so years ago, people had the bright idea that they would take this zinc sulfide and they'd add radium compounds. And the high energy radiation from the radium would provide a fairly constant source of energy to keep these screens glowing. Now, radium has a half-life of about 1,600 years, so it would eventually fade, but not within anybody's lifetime. Uh, the problem is, you know, radium is radioactive, and so here I have a little sample of radium inside this plastic disc here. Um, you can see the burn mark from the radiation damage to the plastic disc from that radium. Okay, so there is a radioactivity issue. Now, there was a problem for those people who worked with radium at the factories where they were using this radium-containing zinc sulfide paint. Um, if we look at a periodic table, we can see that radium is in the same group of the periodic table as calcium. And so what happened is people would uh, accidentally ingest radium, particularly the workers at the factories who were using their lips to make the uh, paintbrushes have a nice pointy tip. Um, and they would get radium into their bodies, and the radium would go in the same locations as calcium would go, and it would get into their bones, it would accumulate in the bones, and the radiation in their bones would deteriorate their bodies, and several people were killed. So you might be asking why we're doing this outdoors with all the traffic and stuff like that. Well, we're in Ottawa, Illinois, which is a location of one of those radium factories. Uh, this first factory came in, it was built a, a little over 100 years ago, and uh, those factories no longer exist. They're clean, they've uh, done a lot of work in terms of cleaning up the town, all the radium contamination, but there's a memorial here memorializing the so-called radium girls who were uh, radium girls, uh, many of the women who were at the plant who uh, ingested radium and eventually died. And if you look closely at this, um, this statue, of the radium girl is holding a set of paintbrushes as well as a wilted flower. And if you look at her feet, she's holding, or she's standing on a clock dial because many of these uh, painters were working on instrument dials and clock faces. So a little bit of history uh, not far from Peoria, Illinois.